We're having a tutorial this afternoon by William N. Baum. Um, and I can't say when Billy was born or under what star he was born, but the stars under which he was born clearly portended a fantastic research career. Billy obtained his Harvard uh, College MA in 1961, and his PhD at Harvard University in those wonderful days between 1961 and 1966. He then went to another older Cambridge University as a postdoc from 65 to 66, postdoc at Harvard again in 66 to 67. He held an NSF graduate fellowship from 62 to 65 and in the middle of the Cold War probably a NATO postdoctoral fellowship from 65 to 66. Um, 66 to 67, an NSF postdoctoral fellowship and from 67 to 70 is a research fellow at Harvard University. He's also been visiting Erskine Fellow at the University of Canterbury in New Zealand, and I think he's currently visiting professor at the University of Auckland. We're not exactly sure about this. He's also a fellow of the Association for Behaviour Analysis International. He's done lots of time as associate editor of Learning and Motivation um, and of JAB, and has been actually on the board of editors of JAB for five three-year terms. He actually made money, I believe, he tells me, from the two books he's written, Understanding Behaviorism, Science, Behavior, and Culture, and Understanding Behaviorism, Behavior, Culture, and Evolution. The fact that he's dropped science is slightly worrying, I think. Um, he's published a few papers as well, actually. Um, so in summary, Billy knows a thing or two, and he's going to share it with you now. Thank you for that sweet introduction, Michael. Uh, so I'm going to uh, try to uh, talk about the dynamics of choice uh, in a way that may uh, be reasonably understandable to, to everybody. Uh, I'm going to talk about what choice is. I'm going to choice and allocation and uh, and then I'm going to talk about dynamics what that what what's meant by that I'm going to contrast equilibrium or steady state with transient dynamics and I'm going to spend quite a bit of time talking about the relevance of time scale and uh, dynamics uh, in relation to time scale and and I will talk about these two ideas of self-similarity and reduction. So first of all, what is choice? Well, I, I'm uh, taking choice to be the allocation of time among activities. And uh, I take it that uh, time is finite in an hour of observation, you get an hour of behavior. Uh, but the, the point I want to make in this slide is that all behavior is choice. You cannot create a situation so impoverished that only one activity is possible. And uh, so every situation permits more than one activity. But it's interesting, I, I find, is that when you uh, think about choice as allocation, also it's true that all behavior entails choice in the sense that every activity has parts that themselves are activities and uh, that would go to even something like a pigeon pecking a key. It has parts like moving the head forward, moving the head back, opening the beak, closing the eyes. So to speak of choice is to speak of behavior, and to speak of behavior is to speak of choice. And just to illustrate the, the idea of allocation a little further, think of it as something like cutting up a pie. And this, of course, is where the finiteness of time is relevant, uh, because uh, it, it implies that you, you can divide time up but uh, 
uh, and, and this example here uh, is, a, let's say, a hypothetical example of a pigeon pecking uh, in an experiment. It might spend a lot of time pecking at the left key, sometimes pecking at, pecking at the right key, and sometime in background activities. Right? But o over here is a hypothetical example of more real-world kind of thing. Uh, imagine a person uh, spends recreational time and uh, in various recreational activities. Maybe a lot of time watching TV, time reading, some time wa taking walks, mo watching movies. And uh, when conditions change, then the allocation changes. And because time is finite, that's, that means that if one activity increases, others must decrease. Uh, well, here's another hypothetical example. Imagine a child in a classroom uh, spending a lot of time hitting other kids, yelling, uh, a little time on task, you know, and then maybe some time resting. Then you in intervene and, let's say, arrange that uh, the teacher's attention is contingent upon uh, the child being on task. The allocation changes. Right now, the the child spends a lot of time on task, less time hitting and yelling, and maybe a little more time resting. You, you know, anyway, that's a, a hypothetical example to illustrate uh, the change of allocation. I'm going to talk quite a bit about uh, concurrent schedules, which means this sort of situation. You have a pigeon with uh, maybe two or three keys. Uh, or more, uh, and a, a feeder to uh, present food. And so um, uh, the situations I'm going to be talking about are ones in which there are two keys to peck at, and each key is associated with a payoff schedule, um, almost always a variable interval schedule, and in all the examples that I'll talk about. Uh, and each of those uh, produces food for the activity of pecking. And, um, and the measure of choice, that is the measure of allocation that I'll be using, is the, the logarithm of the ratio of uh, behavior, activity at key one divided by activity at key two. Uh, the logarithm of that is a useful measure because indifference uh, means it will be zero, and uh, as you move away from that, either to in positive or negative direction, uh, it expresses the uh, degree of preference. Now, what are dynamics? Well, dynamics concern change through time, and so if we're talking about the dynamics of choice, we're talking about uh, changing allocation through time. And, uh, and as, uh, as the change occurs, we, uh, we see it approaching stability or equilibrium. And, uh, and I take it that the behavior and environment together actually constitute a feedback system. Uh, a simple ex example of that is a heating system. Imagine stable room temperature maintained, you know, like in a room like this. And, uh, and then the system can be perturbed, say, either by changing the setting or opening a window. And then the system acts to change the temperature back to another stable level. And that's where the dynamics come in, when the system acts. So what we see with behavior, and here read you know, choice, allocation, uh, is that, let's say, conditions change at the vertical line. Uh, then there'll be a transient phase, and uh, eventually it arrives at a steady state, what we call. And then change conditions again, and again there's a transient, and then again a steady state. Uh, of course, real behavior are not so pretty, uh, but this will illustrate for you the, this, this idea. 
Now, uh, these are, uh, on, the, on the vertical axis is our measure, the log of the uh, uh, peck ratio in this case, left to right. They're logarithms to the base two, by the way. Uh, so 64 to one is the food ratio in this first condition. It's coming from another condition. And you can see it goes up. And after a while, the variation is no longer systematic. Okay, and that's, so that's steady state. The variation never goes away from session to session, but that's, but it's not systematic. Uh, then the, it changes from 64 to 1 to 1 to 32. This goes down, notice negative, because it's favoring the right key. And again, new steady state, variation never goes away. Then it's changed to 128 to 1, and it goes up and, uh, again, ceases to vary systematically. Uh, so notice that if you were going to estimate this steady state, you would be uh, averaging over many sessions. But in order to see the change, in order to see the dynamics here, you are going to look session by session. So the unit in this uh, figure is the session. Uh, so what we, this is where time scale comes in, because to estimate equilibrium, you will need a, a long time scale. But to view the dynamics, you will need to measure and observe at shorter time scales. And so we just saw this as an example. Uh, many sessions to estimate steady state, uh, single sessions, a shorter time scale to, uh, to view the dynamics. I'm going to show you examples where uh, steady state is achieved uh, within the session, and then you have to have some kind of within session measure, blocks or components. And, uh, and even within a, a component of a session, you can have uh, the approach toward a steady state. And then you need a still smaller time scale, which, uh, the, uh, which might be the interfood interval, what happens from one food delivery to the next food delivery. And finally, you could even think in what happens in between food deliveries and you need a still smaller time scale. And uh, I'm going to show you that that uh, is bouts or visits or switches. So at equilibrium, uh, many sessions per point here, uh, a frequently found uh, relation is what, what we call a matching. Uh, relation. So on the vertical axis here is the log of the uh, peck ratio, and on the horizontal axis is the log of the food ratio. And if the uh, log of the of the food of the uh, behavior ratio equaled that of the the food ratio, then the points would all fall along this broken line. That's the, uh, the major diagonal, or what's referred to as strict matching. Uh, but you can see that these points, w uh, which were calculated over each of them over many sessions, uh, from uh, actually those, some of those data, uh, some of, the, of these data I showed you all right, earlier. Uh, the slope is about 0.8. And here's the equation of that line. Uh, so the, our measure of allocation, log of the behavior ratio, is a linear function of the log of the food ratio with a slope of s and intercept log b. And b we consider to be uh, bias unrelated to the food. So. Uh, these are, I'm just showing you again those very same data to show you these. So here are, here are, you know, how three points on that, in that graph were derived. 
the logarithm of 64 to 1 is 6, log base 2. And, uh, and you can see that this steady state here is hovering a little below 6. Uh, logarithm of 32, uh, 1 to 32 would be negative 5. This is hovering not too far away from negative 5. Under 28 to 1, the log of that is 7. And uh, actually, it's pretty, looks like it's hovering around 7. But here we see this, uh, the dynamics within a session uh, in some data that were gathered by Jim Mazur. And what he did was uh, to change conditions from 50-50 uh, food distribution to 90-10, 75-25, or 60-40. And what's on the vertical axis is a measure of choice, a percentage responses on the uh, richer key. And the, each point here is a 15-minute block. So you see he had to, in order to observe the change, the dynamics, he had to go to a smaller time scale. Uh, but you can see this pattern of uh, approaching, uh, perhaps not reaching, but certainly approaching uh, steady state within the session. Um, on a still smaller time scale, Jim looked at uh, uh, response by response following food. That's the solid lines here. Uh, early in training and late in training, rich key, lean key. Uh, the sample sizes are not very large, so uh, it's prob probably can't conclude much more than that uh, choice tends to decrease response by response following the food. Um, but this, uh, I think, is interesting because it, it anticipates what Michael Davison and I call preference pulses. Uh, and I will show you some of those in a little while. Uh, but the question, when you start to think about dynamics, the question arises, well, what changes? Is it always the behavior ratio? And, uh, and if it is, then you might say, well, there's self-similarity across time scales. That is, the same process matching goes all the way down. And notice that in, in Jim's data, uh, you have the approach to steady state uh, higher in the 90-10, you know, uh, at, and higher than the 60-40 and the 75-25. So, so the, the approach to steady state there is appropriate within the session uh, to the food uh, distribution. So, uh, so you might say, well, you know, maybe it's matching all the way down as you go down time scale. On the other hand, you could have reduction. That is, you could have local processes that are not derived from the extended regularity, that are, that are not, uh, in which the, uh, the extended is not uh, evident. And uh, that will happen if there are other small-scale regularities. Uh, and then it would be the case that matching would be derivable from those small-scale processes, but not the other way around. Uh, and I will show you an example of that uh, when we look at bouts or visits, uh, that it, which actually are looking at switching or changing over. But here's, to introduce you to this uh, way of, of looking at, at these data uh, and talking about processes that are, that are not, uh, uh, not evidently matching, these are the very same data I showed you just a little while ago, 64 to 1, 1 to 32, and 128 to 1. Uh, but here, and let's attend first to the three lower graphs, we're looking at the probability 
of visiting the lean alternative. And you can see that with the 64 to 1, it drops right down and stabilizes at a fairly low level. Uh, when you change to 1 to 32, that probability goes up because remember you've reversed from the, uh, now it's the one on the right that's favorable and the probability drops down and roughly stabilizes. Notice that it's at a higher level than, uh, than the 64 to 1 uh, and same thing happens for 128 to 1 although the the, uh, there, the probability of visiting the lean alternative is the lowest of the three. On, in the magenta lines here, uh, that, they go with the, uh, the vertical axis on the right. And uh, they're showing the number of pecs per visit to the lean alternative, but transformed a little. Uh, add one to the number of pecs and take the logarithm base two. And that has the effect that if there's only one pec, uh, then one plus one is two and the log of that is one. So uh, a, a one pec visit looks like one. And uh, you can see that although the, uh, the points sometimes come, go a bit above one, uh, in general those uh, visits at the lean alternative are very brief indeed. So, uh, so that, that gives you an idea uh, of uh, the, 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 what might be valuable in looking at visits. Here we see the, uh, the top graph, the first uh, session of a, a four to one food ratio following one to 256. And uh, on the vertical axis is that very same measure uh, of the, uh, of the uh, pecs per visit. And you notice that, oh, and the, um, the visits to the left are positive, the visits to the right are negative. Uh, so you see a lot of long visits to the right occurring at the beginning of the session. And uh, then, uh, as the session goes along, it shifts and the long visits are to the left, appropriate to the four to one. At the beginning, it's appropriate to the one to 256. Uh, so here we see some dynamics in the visits, you see, changing. Uh, here's the transition from four to one to one to eight. Initially, longer visits on the left, then it changes to longer visits on the right, and that's because now this is one to eight. Uh, one to eight to 64 to one, it starts out appropriate to one to eight, but because it's now 64 to one, by the end of the session, the uh, longer visits are on the left. So, so we can see dynamics here in these visits that uh, have no obvious relation to the uh, matching relation that I showed you earlier. Um, but I will show you uh, how uh, the, uh, the, that's derivable. Um, all right, but notice that in each of these three sessions that I'm showing you here, something happens fairly rapidly all, you know, at a certain point in the session. There's, there's a fairly rapid change. So, so these, these dynamics are, are uh, they're not some very gradual thing. And so I plotted this a somewhat different way, just to, just to drive that point home. Uh, the, uh, the magenta uh, line shows uh, accumulated food, uh, where a food delivery to the right is, ne is negative one, and uh, food delivery to the left is positive one, and uh, that's put on the axis over here. They all start at zero. This one favors the left, right, as it should, and this favors the right, this one favors the left. So, so you see the, the food. Now the, uh, the pecs, uh, this, and this is on the left, 
vertical axis, accumulated in the same way. Positive one for, uh, on the left and negative one on the right. And you see that it turns a fairly rapid corner here, uh, favoring, the left, uh, favoring the right initially and then favoring the left. Here, favoring the left a bit and then strongly favoring the right. And, you know, here, favoring the right and then favoring the left. Um, so we can learn quite a bit about dynamics by looking at visits. Uh, Davison and I have studied dynamics quite a bit uh, using this procedure in which a concurrent uh, variable interval schedule, like what I showed you earlier with the pigeon and the, and the two keys, um, and uh, the food ratio varies within the sessions. So there are two keys. Uh, in a typical experiment, there are seven food ratios within the session, ranging from 27 to 1 to 1 to 27. These are presented randomly, without replacement, and last for 10 or 12 food pre deliveries. And then there's a blackout. And uh, when the lights come on again, uh, it's a new food ratio, uh, but there's no signal, no indication as to what it is. We run this for many sessions and analyze a large sample uh, of those sessions. And so average over those many sessions, you can you see here, this is our measure of uh, uh, allocation, um, that in each component, you see the pattern uh, uh, that it begins somewhere near indifference, that's zero, and then increases, approaches, let's say, a steady state. In the, uh, and uh, this time, we're notice we're looking at uh, steady state on, on quite a small time scale, at least by our usual standards, within a component. Uh, and, uh, and in order to uh, see this change, what we measure is the, uh, the choice from one food delivery to the next. So in the inter-trial uh, interval, uh, inter-food uh, interval. And, uh, and the, you know, this rises this is 27 to 1, 9 to 1. You see they're appropriate. Uh, the 1 to 1, it just sort of bops around uh, in difference. Uh, so this looks like, um, you, you know, because the uh, approaches to, uh, in preference, seem to be appropriate to the food ratios, this, this looks like self-similarity. Uh, I'm going to talk about self-similarity and reduction. I'm going to show you an example of self-similarity. Uh, and I'll do that with, uh, with uh, looking at a choice within components uh, and, uh, in and these uh, preference pulses that I mentioned earlier. And uh, I'll show you another example uh, which I think illustrates reduction, in which the preference pulses uh, actually are reduced to bouts or visits to the alternatives. So here what we see uh, is what I've been calling preference pulses. And in this particular experiment, uh, the on the left alternative was always a variable interval schedule, 45 seconds. Uh, there were seven components within each session, and uh, so there were seven different schedules on the right-hand key, and uh, that generated a, a lot of variation in the uh, food ratio. Um, and, we're, and we're looking here, uh, see, as, as we go by PEX, and think, you can think, if you like, of PEX as a proxy for time. So as you, as you go from zero, which is where, the, where food 
uh, or some other event occurs. I say some other event because I'm going to show you what goes on before any food at all. Um, and and as, as pecks or time go on, uh, you see it, uh, uh, this, the, the dynamics here, the change in choice. Uh, so the very first points represent the first uh, peck following the, the food or the beginning of the component. And, um, and, and we, the reason that we're able to calculate a ratio is that we have many such events, many such first pecks, some on the left and some on the right. So uh, look at the red triangles. You see how the, initially the choice starts out in indifference, it goes a bit toward the right, and then it uh, swings up and uh, moves toward the left. Uh, now over here, in this graph, I have done the very same thing, but for the food. So, uh, so the red triangles here indicate uh, the food ratio uh, of the very first food that occurs in the component. So this is before first food, this is the pecking, before first food in the component, this is uh, where the first food occurs. And you can see that initially uh, it tends to occur on the right and then uh, uh, the food ratio moves toward favoring the left. Uh, now look at, the, uh, at these diamonds here. This is what happens following a food delivery from the right key, and there's a strong preference in favor of the right, and then uh, gradually that uh, uh, disappears and uh, it moves up toward indifference. So, uh, so you get that change. Now over here, look at the food. It favors the, the, and here we're looking at the next food following one from the right. Uh, the ratio of the food favors the right, and then as time goes by uh, without food and the, until you get the next one, it, fa it uh, moves toward uh, equality. Uh, and, um, and the X's show what happens when there are two in a row from the, uh, the right-hand key. And uh, you can see it's just uh, another preference pulse like that one, only stronger preference for the right. Um, these up here are showing you what happens on the left. is much smaller uh, preference pulse, but it's there. And again, compare with what happens on the left. Okay, so this, so the if when you compare this graph with this graph, point for point, it looks like uh, there's something like tracking going on here. And uh, and if you plot one against the other, the uh, the peck ratio versus the food ratio. Uh, this is the relation you get, uh, and indeed, it, uh, you know, it's a slope of 0.9 and um, a pretty good fit. So uh, it looks like, as a matter of fact, we are seeing there matching on quite a small time scale. Remember, we were, we were looking at what happens uh, uh, from one food delivery to the next. So we're looking uh, at, at very small, in, in order to see the dynamics, we're looking at very small samples, uh, sorry, very, on a very small scale, and, uh, and we're seeing that pattern of uh, dynamics, transient followed by approach to steady state, in, uh, even on this very small scale. Now let's look at a reduction example. And, uh, and this time uh, we will we'll look at a still smaller time scale than the pulses. And that is visits or bouts or, or switches or changeovers, however you like to talk about it. Uh, and I'm going to show you that you can derive uh, the pulses from the bouts or switches but you cannot derive the bouts or the switches from the pulses. 
Uh, now, I know this, this probably looks a little complicated. It's not too bad, actually. Uh, so first, let's attend to this black line with the triangles. On the vertical axis is pecs per visit. And uh, on the horizontal axis is food deliveries. And what we see here is, in the black line, is the very first visit following uh, food delivery. And this is the first delivery in a component. This is two in a row from the same alternative, three in a row from the same alternative. We call these continuations, just to have a, have a term, you know. Uh, but it, it, this, it actually does sometimes occur. You get 11 to one, 11 in a row from the same alternative. And, and that's what that last point is showing you, the, uh, the, the number of pecs in a visit following 11 in a row from the same alternative. Now, the pattern of dynamics here, that, so that, actually, that's showing you some dynamics uh, uh, within the uh, component across food deliveries. But, I, what I, but I, what I want to show you particularly is this pattern of dynamics. Um, you get a long visit, which means a, a long delay until switching, followed by rapid switching back and forth. And, and that pattern persists. Uh, food delivery after food delivery tend to the blue lines for the moment. And uh, it, it's the amplitude here may, may increase. Uh, be, but that's because as you go up and down here, the, the visits even though they're short, the visits to the, uh, the just productive alternative, which, which means, see, they call this one, two, three, it's the odd numbered visits, uh, are a little longer. And uh, in fact, the visits to the not just productive alternative really don't change much and they're pretty minimal. They, uh, you notice they average to less than two pecs per visit. So that's the pattern. Long visit, then rapid change back and forth. Uh, the red line is showing you what happens following a discontinuation. That is, uh, suppose there have been, uh, let's just look at the, at the last point here. Suppose there have been um, uh, 10 in a row from one alternative, and now there's a food delivery from the other alternative. Well, well this red square here is showing you the uh, post-food uh, visit. And, uh, uh, you know, you run out of data, but uh, going back here to uh, one and then the other, all right, so it's uh, like a left right or a right left, you, you can see that uh, the same pattern is there, but it's very much diminished. So that tells us also that the uh, those continuations before this discontinuation have an effect. All right. uh, now, the, we can derive the pulse from these visits, and I'll do this with just a very simple model. What, what I'll do is I'll assume that uh, the the, the longer post-food visits, uh, let's say they vary from one to six pecs, uh, and I'll you know, just assign an equal probability to them, and uh, post-switch visits that are just two or three pecs, and then what I'll do is I'll uh, sum pecs on the left and sum pecs on the right across various sequences and calculate the, uh, the log ratio of the pecs. And, uh, and this is the result uh, of, of this simple um, uh, model. So you get a log uh, behavior ratio that starts out high, drops down. The reason it oscillates here is just because I didn't allow any visits longer than six pecs. If, uh, 
uh, if I did something a little more realistic, uh, you know, and allowed visits that were longer than six pecs, then uh, you would uh, you wouldn't see that oscillation. So, so we can derive the pulse uh, from the visits, and that means that we we can derive matching from the visits. You see, uh, but we could not derive the visits from the pulses or from matching, and uh, and that's why I call this an example of reduction. Uh, the uh, the the uh, oh uh, the preference pulse represents a longer time scale than the bouts or switches. That uh, that's a, a, a point that I didn't uh, bring out fully, uh, and the reason is that the preference pulses are derivable from the bouts or the switches. Um, but the reason that the that uh, you cannot derive the 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 switches from the pulse is that the calculation of the pulse ignores the switches. When you're calculating the pulse, you just look at the first pack and then the second pack and then the third pack, and uh, some of those first pecs occur at the left, some at the right, some of the second pecs occur at the left and at the right, and there's nothing in there about the switches. And uh, so, the, so the switches and the bats are not derivable from the pulse, and that's why I, I call this an example of reduction. Um, so now let me summarize what I have told you. Uh, first of all, I, I said that choice is time allocation among activities, and uh, and that dynamics is changed through time, toward or away from steady state. So here, when we're talking about the dynamics of choice, we're talking about the uh, dynamics of time allocation among activities. Uh, I touched briefly on the ideas of steady state. Uh, and equilibrium, and that, and that these imply uh, a feedback system, uh, I, uh, but I didn't uh, say much about that uh, behavior environment feedback system. Uh, and I explained how time scale enters in, that in order to estimate steady state, you will use a long time scale longer, I should say, and to estimate change, you'll need a shorter time scale. But this can occur at many different scales, as I've showed you, uh, over many sessions, and then you uh, use single sessions, but all the way down to uh, talking about visits and uh, at a very short time scale indeed. But, uh, but there again, there was that approach to, uh, toward a steady state. So you can see that approach this, uh, toward steady state at many different uh, time scales. And uh, I talked about the, uh, how laws of equilibrium can be contrasted with laws of dynamics. I took the example of the matching law, and uh, I used it to uh, explain that self-similarity would mean that the same law would apply at, at all different time scales. But reduction is another possibility in which uh, you have different processes and different laws at different time scales. And uh, so that, that was uh, uh, what I thought of as, as a uh, sort of introduction to talking about the dynamics of choice.